Hello. Well, there's a storm outside. I've not got any work in today, so I've got a moment to do something else. And a customer of mine says, thank you for sorting some mini DV tapes for me a while back. Here is the camcorder I recorded them on, he says. Uh, and it seems to have a problem. Uh, he says there's an issue with closing the tape door. OK, so uh, let's open this and see what we have. OK, well, it's uh, in a camera bag comes with a small to small firewire cable. That'll come in handy for something. It's decent quality, that too. Let's have a look at the camera itself. There's a replacement battery, a Duracell one. Ah, so it's a Sony, and indeed it looks like that's not working right. We have the mains adapter. Any other goodies? Um, AV cable. This is this uh, sort of D-shaped cable also used on Micro MV. You will have seen me use one of these on Micro MV recently. But this one is composite video only, so not sure where the S-video connector is, if there is one. That's the power cable. That's DV firewire connector. There. So, there is no S-video connector on this. That would make it pretty useless for any analog transfer. Uh, and also, if you wanted to do um, video capture, so if you wanted to put video in and convert to firewire, which some camcorders can do or can be patched to do, that would be no good for that because there's no S-video connection. Unless uh, there's another version of this cable with an S-video. I'm very surprised there's no S-video on that. It's rather poor, isn't it? Oh well, let's uh, ignore the analog connections and uh, see why that's not latching shut. Now there's every possibility I won't be able to fix this, but uh, we'll give it a shot, shall we? I'll power that up on my isolation transformer, as I always do. Reattach power device, C3211, so it knows it has a problem. Oh, there's... Char there's uh, Charging a battery. Get out of its setting mode. So it keeps saying C3211. So the loading mechanism is probably jammed. I'm just going to uh, see if by some chance it might start getting itself to the loading position. But it doesn't look like it. Right, I'll set you up so you can look down on this and get a better view. Having done some research on this, it's probably um, a fairly major problem, but uh, we may be able to at least temporarily resolve it. One thing I'm going to do is do a reset without this battery so that it does a full power reset. It can be caused apparently by the loading uh, gear having worn or contacts uh, on the loading switch. There's a uh, a mode switch which tells the, the deck where it is. But uh, just for a moment, let's see if we can reset it like that. I don't think so. I think it's going to error again. Yeah. So that was a full reset with the battery removed. So it can be that the loading mo uh, gear uh, is sticking because it's worn. Uh, we may be able to get it going again by uh, giving it a nudge, but I'm going to have to gain access by taking this cover off. I see taking these two screws off that they're different sizes. That didn't go so well. Normally, if you'd undo those cabinet screws there, you'd expect this to come off, but it's not, for whatever reason. I'm going to push this out of the way, and we're going to look down there with a microscope. I'm going to push this out of the way, and we're going to look down there with a microscope. Okay, I believe that is the loading gear 
a loading gear there and I believe that that can stick so I'm going to give it a bit of a nudge that's the uh, loading motor there you can see the terminals to the loading motor there so that goes down onto this gear and then that is transferred to this gear and others under the deck which will operate the uh, guide posts and the rest of the mechanism such as the pinch roller so this could be stuck here at this end where it connects to the motor or at the other end where it goes to the transfers onto the other gears, the metal ones. I could apply a voltage to the, with the camcorder powered off, I could apply a voltage to the terminals of the loading motor, which I showed you under the microscope just now. Uh, you could argue that might damage electronics that's driving it, but I think the electronics are capable of handling that because there's back EMF from the motor anyway. So the electronics can handle the fact that the motor will generate a certain amount of energy of its own. So for as long as I keep the voltage fairly low, say three or four volts, we can see if I can drive that motor. And if it just doesn't go and just jammed, it proves that the loading mechanism is stuck. So with the camcorder powered down, let's see if I can apply voltage. I don't know the polarity. We'll have to experiment. Let's see if we can apply voltage to those terminals, which we can barely see. I need to hold this down at the same time as applying that voltage, so I'll need lots of hands. Perhaps if I put a bit of sticky tape on this to hold this closed while I put the probes in there with the supply voltage, that might be an idea. Right, with that held down, let's see what happens if I power the motor one way or the other and see if it will load. I've set my power supply to about 4.7 volts, half an amp limited. And I applied that, I don't know if you can see it, but I have applied it and it's just going to the current limit. Which means it's either the wrong polarity and it's trying to eject when it's already ejected, or it's jammed, which I think is the case probably. Let's change the polarity. And the same happens, it goes straight into current limit. So... That motor is almost certainly jammed because the loading mechanism is jammed. Okay. So this is the gear we're struggling with. Let me try again to free it up. Ah, that seems free now, doesn't it? All right, let's try powering it up then. Nope, still no life. Perhaps I should remove my sticky tape at this point. I know it says do not push, but I'm gently rocking it there in case it might just free it up. So it seems that that gear was freed up, but still not running. Oh look, it's jammed again. So I had got it freed up at one point but not now. Maybe I'd taken the pressure off it when I powered the motor. I think I really need to get the housing off this camera. I'm struggling with releasing this, but I'm just gonna to have to find out how to. I think there's a screw on the inside there I need to undo. And another one there, I'm not sure. Well, there's a screw down there, but I can't believe we're supposed to undo that. Surely Sony wouldn't have put a screw in down here facing into the mechanism in order to be able to get this off. That seems unlikely. Maybe I should concentrate on taking the whole cabinet off. This is so often the way with camcorders, you take dozens of screws out and you're no further along getting any of it apart. You know what? I think I've just got it to load. 
with this thing. I've just unjammed it. It started loading in then under the motor power. So let's see what happens if I power it up and whether it can um, go in. I've taken the sticky tape off here. Oh well, there we go. Uh, let's see if I can get it to go through an eject and uh, reinsert sequence. So to eject, we do that. Didn't detect that. There we go. That was good. And close. Now it's jammed again. <laughs> and that'll give us the error message, I'm sure. So we know we're in the right area, but I don't know if there's any hope of fixing that without stripping it down and replacing parts which are probably no longer available. You know, I'm going to try again because I think... I'm going to try again because I think that underneath that black gear we've been having all trouble with, I think that's actually the mode switch itself. So I'm going to see if I can get it to lace up again and well, ideally, of course, I'd like to strip the whole thing out, but maybe I can get some cleaning solution in the bottom of that uh, mode switch, if it is a mode switch. So let's close this again and lace it, uh, get it to close with the uh, power supply. It's unjammed it. Yep, that's it laced up or lacing up. Okay, good. So we have it laced up again. I can move my sticky tape. Now, can I get to that gear and apply a bit of uh, switch cleaner down there? Maybe I should have done it unlaced. I think I'll um, get it to partly unlace. So what I'll do is I'll select eject and then when it starts to do the eject I will uh, cut the power. Struggling with eject now. Ah. <laughs> so, my question to myself is, is this the load, just a gear, or is it actually the top part of the mode switch? I'm going to try applying some switch cleaner, well, something like switch cleaner, in under here. I'm going to try some deoxit D5 in there. It's going to be hard to get it in exactly the right spot. And I may need to clean the head drum before tape ever touches it again. Right, well, let's see if it's... Uh, it's going to need exercising, so I'm sure it's jammed at the moment, but I'll just try it for laughs. Jammed again. And it would be. Okay, the problem seems to be that this gear, which may be the mode switch, the problem is that it keeps jamming. So whether or not it's a connection problem inside the mode switch doesn't really matter. This thing is jamming. So I'm not going to be able to uh, fix the problem by cleaning the contacts by squirting switch cleaner through here because the, the mode switch shouldn't be jamming anyway. So I don't see that uh, 
cleaning the contacts is going to help us. We need a new mode switch. I can try to power it in again, but it's not going to get us anywhere, is it? Because it's going to keep jamming. So I can get it to lace up sometimes. It's not going to help us any, is it? So it's fully laced now, and if I had a tape in there, the machine would actually run. But as soon as we go into eject, it will jam again. I can see if I can exercise it by... First I'll power it up and it'll all be fine. It won't realise, it knows there's no tape in there, but nothing else will happen. I could have put a, a gash tape in, I suppose. Right, so that's all happy. And I'll do eject, and this time I'll try to catch it immediately, it starts to move. Yeah. Right, so... I'd stopped it before it managed to get to the end of the uh, eject position. Now if I power it up, it might drive in. Yep, good. So this is exercising, you see. Oop. Done it again. Let's see if it'll drive in. Oh, unfortunately it went the wrong way. And now it's stuck. Yep, back to the same place again. So it's jammed up again. I think we have to write this one off, but at least we do know what the cause was. It's the load switch and gear assembly. Um, and we can't, unfortunately, find a way to take the cabinet of work, uh, work off, so I can't really strip it down any further. If I could, I could actually get to that switch and maybe do a little bit more with it. Let me have one more go. Okay, I've kind of made some progress dismantling it. But can I really get to this loading motor and what's beneath it? That's what we've been working on all this time, that loading motor. So yes, what we've been working on is this motor and this gear here, which just keeps jamming on that motor. I'm on the screw there, which is on the top of the gear and what I believe to be mode switch. I'm just going to try slackening it off and then doing it up again. We slacken it off. Does that help us unjam the gear? Well, I should be able to drive the motor a lot easier now. So I'll push the uh, carriage down. I think I'm set my current limit a bit low. I think it's drawing about an amp actually. Right, now can I go to the unlaced position? That looks correct. And can we go back again? Or is it jammed? So by manually operating it, I can seemingly get it to work. Let's see if I can do that multiple times without it jamming. I do seem to be having some success with that now. 
That being the case, it would imply that it is just an electrical problem on the mode switch contacts. Keep going with that for a minute. Let's see if we can exercise those contacts. Well, that's looking a little bit more promising. So I'll try a little bit more contact cleaner on those um, on the underside of what I believe to be the mode switch. Okay, and I'll continue exercising it with the uh, power supply for a while. So it seems to be positive to the inner terminal gets you into the laced position and positive to the outer terminal there uh, gets you to the eject position. So maybe the jamming is happening if it gets overdriven into the eject position. Shall I prove that? I'll overdrive it into the eject position and see if it jams. Right, does that jam it? So I left the supply on after it had reached eject, which would happen, of course, if it didn't know it had reached eject because the contacts were not working on the mode switch. Well, it didn't jam at that time, no. Okay, let's uh, power it up. I know it's in bits, but I think everything should still be able to work. Let's power it up and see if I can uh, get it to lace and unlace. Or eject and accept the tape. I'm sure eject will work once, but what happens after that is anybody's guess. I think I'll just try to refit this cabinet work a little bit around the back here before I power it up. Okay, I've reassembled a bit of the cabinet work. No screws back in yet, but just uh, enough that we can get the machine into a reasonable state. So hopefully I should be able to uh, get it to do an eject but the key thing is whether I can get it to uh, close again afterwards okay eject I suspect this will work if we can get it to detect the eject it has this problem it doesn't tend to do that every time right now can we get it to close no Power it up. So odd that it will go from that point, but as soon as it ejects, it jams itself up again. But I can use a power supply to unjam it. Are we having a problem with the eject switch? Is that the real problem? I begin to think that's the real problem. How does it detect the um, position of this gate here? Okay, let's close it again and have a look at the uh, mechanism for detecting this being open or not. Let's have a look at that. Does it seem to be going in? at all the wrong times. So fundamentally the deck is running but it's just unable to uh, perform the uh, 
loading operation. Oh look, you see, it'll do it now and then. It's making some horrible noises. So I don't think we'll call it fixed, but we have seen it work. So you can see that it does work. It's playing okay, though it had a bit of trouble earlier for the reason that I expected. I'd got contamination on the head and it was snatching on the tape a little bit and that's because I didn't clean it up enough after um, putting the switch cleaner in. So that was to be expected really. And this is a gash tape so I don't really care too much. And the situation is that it will eject but getting it to accept the tape again is unreliable. I don't know if when it fails to take a tape in whether that's because it's mechanically jamming or because it's losing its position uh, on the uh, mode switch but either way it needs a new mode switch. But when it works it does actually work. Not bad. I think I'll um put the cabinet work back on, the rest of the cabinet work, and refit some of the millions of screws that are missing. This is an interesting switch to fit. It's a night shot, but the way it works is you slide this backwards and forwards, but the switch it operates sort of rotates up and down. So there's a slot here, and the switch has to sit in that slot. And then that's how it operates. Then you can put the top back on. And you'll see I fitted a screw, I think in the wrong sequence. I've got a screw in there, but I need to uh, take it out and refit it onto the panel work. Okay, I've refitted uh, nearly all of the screws. I left a few out that were just inside this panel because they are so awkward to get to. I don't really fancy going to the battle with those again. Uh, so let's see where we are. We've got a tape loaded. Confirm that plays okay. Good. Let's see if we can eject. Good. And reload. And play. And we'll go through several more cycles. Also, we'll try... Uh, Closing it without a tape in. Certainly looking a bit happier than it was, isn't it? So I think maybe that uh, switch cleaner has worked its way into the um, mode switch and uh, we're in a working condition. Considering what state it was in when I got it, that's uh, come out quite well. A nice feature of these particular camcorders is if you uh, put a high definition HDV tape in there they do recognise it and tell you that it can't be played rather than just not playing the tape and making you think it might be blank. So that's a uh, Sony DCR HC51. There's lots of other camcorders with a similar mechanism and uh, you know we've gone from total rubbish to something that's at least usable for playing tapes back. Hope you've enjoyed that. I'll do plenty more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now.